Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and today I show you three of my favorite VS Code features that lets you develop Python apps and especially machine learning, deep learning and data science apps like a pro. Believe me, this will make your work environment so much easier, especially the last tip. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first feature is the integrated two-pointer notebook support. So one thing we can of course always do is use a Google Colab. These are amazing, but often we also want to develop on our local machine. And for this, we could spin up the classic two-pointer notebook server and use this. But let's be honest, it doesn't look beautiful and it's also not the best developer experience. So I'd much rather have this inside VS Code on my local machine. And what is really cool is that it has built-in support. So we can simply create a file with the ending ipy and b. And now this is recognized as notebook and we can use this. We can here select our environment. In this case, I want to use my machine learning conda environment. And the only thing we have to do for this is have the Python extension installed and we also have to install a Jupyter kernel inside this environment. But if this is not yet the case, then it will show you a prompt and you can easily set this up. So now we can start coding in the cell and say import numpy as np and as you can see we get auto completions and suggestions. So all the great features that we are used to from our IDE, then we can run the cell and insert a new one. We can also insert a markdown cell. So all the normal notebook, notebook features. We can also connect to a remote server by saying command shift P and open the command palette. And then we search for Jupyter and select this one. And then we can specify a host name if we have one. So this is super cool and I recommend trying this out inside VS Code and this is feature number one. Feature number two is the Python interactive mode in VS Code and a lot of people don't know about this but it's actually an awesome feature. So often I don't want to use a Jupyter notebook but rather a normal Python script but then I still want to have interactive features to play around with this and test this. And we can get this by using a special comment with two percent signs. And now VS Code will interpret this as a special cell similar to a notebook cell. And then here, for example, we can insert more comments to make more separate cells. And then we can click on run cell. And now this will open an interactive window. Then, for example, let's run the next cell. And here we can play around with this. For example, here I can type code like in a terminal. For example, I want to display the data frame. So I can say command shift and run this. I can also create new variables if I need them. And then let's also run the last cell so we can also render the plots here. Then we can also click on variables and inspect all the variables that we have during the session. And then for example, for the data frame, we can click on this button and open a data viewer. So here we can analyze our pandas data frame. For example, we can change the sorting according to the columns. And yeah, simply, this is simply helpful to analyze your data frame. And then we can also debug a cell. For example, here we can click on debug. And now we can step over the code just like in a normal debugger and inspect our local variables. So this is also super helpful sometimes. So yeah, I recommend just playing around with these interactive cells by using this comment. And let me know if you also find this helpful. And this is feature number two. And the third feature is really a game changer for your development environment. And this is remote development with VS Code. This extension includes remote containers, remote SSH and remote WSL. And with this, we can connect to a Docker container, a remote machine or the Windows subsystem for Linux. We can also combine this and can connect to a Docker container on a remote machine. And then we can create our coding environment inside a Docker container and open VS Code there and start coding. So in the Docker container, we specify all the dependencies, all the CUDA drivers, for example, and all the libraries we need for our project. For example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, whatever. 
And then we can simply set this up once and connect to the container, open VS Code and start coding inside this environment. And also all your team members can use the same container and have the very same coding environment. So this is really a game changer for your projects. And now let me show you how to connect to a Docker container with VS Code. Now to get started, I recommend checking out these guides for SSH, for a container and also for remote Docker over SSH. And then the way it works is that on our own computer, we have VS Code and the remote extension. And then inside the container, we define how this container looks like. And then here we can run the application and also use a debugger, for example. And then inside the container, we also open up VS Code. And then we have to mount the code so we can either copy this from our machine or we can clone it for example from github and to get started of course you have to have docker installed on your machine and then i also recommend installing the docker extension and then after installing the remote extensions in the lower left you find this button and here you have different options for example you can connect to a remote host or we can attach to a running container and the simplest way to get started is click on try a development container sample and then select python and now this will open a remote connection to a container so now we are inside this container so here we have all the starter code we also have the terminal inside this container and then for example in this example it has the requirements flask and it has a simple flask app you can also inspect the docker file if you want to see how this is set up and now to get started you find the command in the readme so we say python and flask run and now if we start this then we can even open this in our browser on our machine so this works and now we can start coding here or debugging here or whatever. So yeah, this is the simplest way how to get started. And now let me also show you how to define our own Docker containers. So here, let's close this remote connection and this. And to get started, we have to define a Docker file where we want to specify how this Docker container looks like. So here we use a base image and there are different ones available in the Docker Hub that you can use, for example, for TensorFlow, PyTorch, CUDA. Also at NVIDIA, there are optimized Docker containers, for example, for TensorFlow or PyTorch that you can use with these instructions. So yeah, this is worth checking out. In our case, I start with a simple Python base image where I want to copy the requirements. And in this case, it only has scikit-learn. And then we say pip install the requirements. And then when we have this, we have to build the image. So we say docker build minus T and give it a name. I already did this. So this image is now available. And now um, we can select the docker extension and see the images so in this case this one then we can start the container and now when this is started we can say attach shell or attach visual studio code and now this will open a connection to the container and then inside the container we have the requirements file that we copied and then i already created this by hand before so i created a file here and this was cached so this is still here and then we can for example import scikit-learn and build our model and then we can say python main.py and by the way if we simply select python then we see this is python 9 because we used a python 9 image so now we say python main.py and now this is executing the code with this library that we want so this is how to work in a docker container with vs code and yeah these are all the features that i wanted to show you in this video i hope this was helpful to you let me know what you think about these features and if you also have another recommendation for vs code and then i hope to see you in the next video bye